Okay. Back here at the Husky Bad Wool. How are you guys doing? I wasted a couple of minutes here trying to record this shit. Uh, the audio, I mean, sorry, the video. As you can tell, I probably haven't slept. Uh, I don't know how long now. Uh, well, the thing is, for reasons above my pay grade and my intelligence, which isn't that much, uh, fucking video, you start recording and automatically it just stops. I don't know, it's because this computer has enough RAM to power a calculator now. That means little to those of you who are not technically inclined. Or I don't know what. Thing is, we're going audio again. Not because I want to, but because it is what it is. Okay, so yeah. How you guys doing? Uh... Did you enjoy last week's uh, fiasco? The three of you that watched, me included. Or listen, rather. Let me see how many fucking... Actually, I can't. Anyway, uh, it was weird. I would like to thank Alfred for uh, popping up there and help me... Shoot the breeze. Uh, I would like to apologize if things offended you, but uh, we have a dark sense of humor. It was all intended in fun, not to offend anyone. Uh, that was not the intention, not to offend anyone. It's just, you know, have a laugh, you know, because they're very scarce and difficult to find. Isn't it weird that, you know, last week we, uh, Alfred and I were talking about getting mugged uh, the infamous mugging that happened to me in the Mon and in Monumento, the monument here in Santiago. And a couple of nights ago, my wife got mugged. I posted this on Facebook, which I still don't comprehend the reason why I still have a Facebook account. I'm contemplating every minute and every second of the day why I have this account open again. Because uh, only people of I don't even know how to say the words follow me there uh and it's 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 a cesspool much like Twitter but it's with more paragraphs and people can actually spew their vinegar and venom with more pizzazz and have the length to perform such venom in a very appropriate manner uh, so, um, to, I mean, to give you the short version of it, uh, my wife got mugged walking home, uh, she, uh, all her things that she had in her purse were snatched, including the, the house keys, her debit card and her phone, her cell phone. Uh, since being technology what it is I, I and, and this is just going to be a public service announcement i don't know the the little cunts that fucking took it i think they already caught them uh my wife showed me a picture she says that she kind of recognized them although it was like 7 30 p.m so it was nighttime but she says she got a good look at their mugs uh and she saw she sent me a picture of those little cunts and i call them little cunts because they're kids I mean, they're not even, I don't think they're 12 yet. So, yeah, that's the future of this fucking generation coming at you right now. We got fucking 12-year-old little cunts driving in mopeds, fucking uh, jacking people on the fucking street because uh, apparently their fucking parents have no way of providing for them. They have to fucking uh, seek for themselves. Uh, the thing is that the phone uh, showed up. Uh, not that not that we physically found it out. I just, you know, you remember Alfred uh, who talked here last week with me. Uh, well, he uh, he took some courses in ethical hacking and whatnot. So he, he hooked me up with the powers uh, and we got a, a kind of a low jack deal on the phone to put it lightly. It's not that complicated. It's Google service. You know, you report your phone is lost. Google gives you a win, a GPS or where the fucking thing is. The thing, the beauty of it is that Alfred put a, a an alarm on the phone to sound every two minutes 
whether it's on or off or e whether or even if you switch off the, the volume rocker or not, the alarm is going to sound every two minutes. And uh, also got the GPS on where the phone is. And, and I mean, it's it pretty much stayed in the same spot for a whole day. And uh, it was in a, a place called, called Los Irolitos. So if you're Dominican, you probably get an idea where that fucking place is. Uh, so yeah, I'm very limited and very, uh, you know, excited to talk about this kind of shit because this is the things that make me want to love and live in this fucking country. And in case you don't fucking get my point, this is fucking sarcasm. <sighs> Apologize for uh, starting the podcast with such pits and vinegar. But you know, you gotta let out the fucking steam. You gotta... Uh, let the people know how the fuck exactly how you feel and in my particular case I'm fucking livid but like I said the, the good thing is that we got that little uh, that little thing going on uh, you know uh, having the, the sound the, 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 the alarm sound on the, on the stolen phone I mean it, the, thank god she wasn't uh, she wasn't she never goes out with her documents so you know and no, no ID. She left her credit card, which is a little bit more serious. She left that at home. So debit card, she already got a new one. So that's been t taken care of. We need to get her a new phone. We got to talk with the, you know, the, the phone companies, uh, the phone company in order to get her a new SIM card and all that shit. Uh, have I gone to the police? No, uh, there's no point in going to the police in this fucking country, which, oh, you have to report the phone stolen. What fucking for? It, chances are the fucking head of the, uh, of the mafia of fucking stealing shit in the streets, the little goons, they pay their respects to that godfather over there in the fucking police station. Cause in this country, that's how fucked up things are. That the police might be the ones that are, and I'm not saying all cops are fucking corrupted, but in this country it is a good fucking chunk, good fucking chunk. I mean, I've met good cops in this country. I'm not going to belittle, belittle them or berate them and say, ah, they're all fucking full of shit. They're all, uh, they're all, uh, uh, you know, uh, thieves and whatnot. No, not all of them. They're, they're good, decent cops out there, but unfortunately the majority is the one that take the cake and every time you hear the news it's like a cop was uh, caught stealing this a cop was the head of this it's like fuck and there's a side of you that understands too because cops are not paid well in this country they're not fucking paid well at all so you're like well i get it you're trying to feed put food on the table but you're fucking people in the process so fuck you uh, I, I don't know what to think about you. Uh, so, yeah, we got all that. Um, let's try to think positive, positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. We have a cat in the house now. I don't know if we talked about this before. I have a cat now. We have a cat. His name is, his name is Lino, as my daughter named him. She's nine, going on ten. And she loves Thundercats Roar, so... Uh, so the cat is not the first of his name. <laughs> yeah, fuck, uh, the little fucker has a little attitude, but I like him. He's cute. I mean, he, he sold me on the cuteness. He's mega cute, mega cute cat and loves to be petted and shits like there's no tomorrow. I mean, that fucking sandbox, you got to be checking it every half an hour because I don't know. I mean, I'm feeding him cat food. I'm not feeding him like it's not like when we eat out or order in, uh, we give him a, a plate for him as well. No, no, we keep him straight up cat food and he just shits for days, man. That cat, kitty litter is filled to the brim with cat shit and piss. We, do we clean it? Of course we do. God damn it. it would, we wouldn't be living in this fucking apartment if, if I didn't clean that shit up course i clean it up but the thing is that you know as soon as you clean it up he fills it up again that's the whole point he shits and eats and sleeps sleeps like a motherfucker i've never seen i'm so sleep envy with this fucking cat 
He'll sleep anywhere. He, you lay him on your fucking shoulders, he'll fall asleep there. I'm f- so fucking envious of this cat. I cannot get an hour of sleep at night. And this fucker sleeps the whole fucking day, night and afternoon. And it just starts fucking bugging me at 3 a.m. in the morning. Like, yeah, open the fucking door. I want to be petted. Fuck you. I love you, little kitty. But no, fuck you. <laughs> Those are jokes, people. I can't believe you, you would get offended by me making a joke about a fucking cat. Which I love, by the way. <sighs> ah, Offended. Uh, offended. Wow, we don't get offended anymore, don't we? Nah, we, we we live in the most hardcore generation of them all, don't we? In the generation that just you know knows how to take it. You can't make, you you can make jokes of anything nowadays, right? I mean, there are certain things that I'm thankful that uh, uh, certain stances have been taken, and. Like, uh, people are more, what word should I use here? People are more inclined to be respectful in certain areas, but it's all in the motive. You see, uh, right now I really don't like how the world is turning. I don't like the way the world is. I don't like, uh, the way I'm seeing things. I am glad that uh, people that had been canceled before are now making, you know, baby steps back towards un- uncanceledness. Like, for example, Chris D'Elia. Chris D'Elia, if you don't know, is a comedian, stand-up comic. He's been in a couple of uh, TV sh- uh, uh, TV sitcoms and whatnot. Uh, good, uh, uh, good uh, stand-up comic. Uh, he has uh, a podcast. I think he's going to restart it again. I think it's called You're Welcome. And it's a solo podcast, much like what I do. You know, just talking shit, spewing shit right out of the head. Of the, with no preparation, no prep time, no whatever. He just shoots out. And it was funny. I liked it. And then it stopped because then he got uh, fucking accused by a bunch of women saying that he was uh, fucking them on the side when they were uh, underage. By the way, this happened years ago and uh, before he met his current woman, the woman which he lives with and uh, just had a son with while all these allegations came by. And uh, the dude came back this week and did like a nine minute video where uh, he said that he did everything consensual. And I kind of believe him, not because he's a dude. But because uh, there has been no actual prosecution made against him. So, uh, like, has people gone to the police? Oh, so it's a, he sh- it's, she said he, sh- he said. And, oh, yeah, I got proof here. But you're just showing one side of the conversation. I mean, uh, and and it's not like he denied it either. Like, he, oh, yeah, he did f- fuck a bunch of girls. He fucked a bunch of women and that's something he called up uh, called himself out on and he admitted that he treated uh, sex like it was a handshake like nothing and now he's taking he says that he takes more ownership over it and he apologized for you know his overt sexual uh, sexualization of women and whatnot that now he has a different perspective since he's now a dad uh, something that he wasn't before he didn't have no responsibilities he was just a single guy with a levito that worked and uh was uh, women throwing himself at him, at, at themselves at him and he was like well fuck if you want to fuck fine and he treated it very nonchalantly and he admits that, to that so he got he's co- he's making a ready stretch to come back and it was a shame because he was going to be in the new Zack Snyder movie not the Justice League one the the the, the one that's going to be on Netflix with Dave Batista was going to be on that movie and they cut him out of the movie due to all the allegations because that's all it's needed now you know you, you fuck up and people say that you fucked up and they point it out and that's enough just to uh, remove any type of food out of your table uh another guy that came back this week was ryan callen he came back to the fighter and the kid 
I'm basically doing this the podcast beats. <laughs> but these are comedians and why I'm talking about comedians. It's like the reason I talk about comedians and and I talk about these f- uh, people that c- are kind of interesting to me is because comics at this day and age have become like our sages. Uh, the people that ha- that are actually being the voice of reason. And that's kind of fucked up when you think that a comedian, a person who should, you know, talk about satire, the person that should be talking about, you know, uh, twisting perspectives just to make us, uh, us laugh. Yet, when you listen to the podcast of these comedians, like, uh, uh, you know, Andrew Schultz, uh, uh, Rogan, of course, uh, Tim Dillon, uh, Tom Segura, uh, jo- uh, 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 Joey Diaz, all these comedians, you hear them um, and you listen to a balanced worldview. You don't agree 100% with everything that they say. But at least you see that these people are looking things through a very balanced worldview. Like not trying to shit on one side specifically, but looking at both sides and calling the bullshit on both sides. Because guess what? Bullshit is not an exclusive thing to the people opposed to your views. Bullshit is a universal language spoken by every single human being that has ever existed in the history of the human race. Me included, you included, anyone included. If you're a human being, if you the human genome is inside of you, guess what? There is a one trillion percent chance that you're gonna be a bullshit artist. Because we're all bullshit artists. Uh, some of the some of us are just better at it, or some of us are better at hiding it. But all of us lie. All of us are fuck ups. All of us say shit that are not true all of us see things very uh, from a prism that has some truth into it but is not 100 percent sure or 100 percent truth we make conjunctions we make assumptions we make ideas of what we think is true but is not we don't know what the fuck is truth we have no fucking clue truth can come and punch us in the fucking face and we'll be like well that's bullshit and it happens now. It happens right now. And it happens on both fucking sides. And what are the both sides? You know what the fucking both sides are, you fucking hypocrite. And I'm fucking done playing bullshit. And that's why I ain't talk the way I talk. That's the way. That's why I, I, I don't want to be fucking hiding. And, and why the reason why I wanted to do the video so you can see my fucking face is seeing that I'm not trying to be funny. Hoo 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 ga ga gee or whatever the fuck. I'm just trying to be real. Like in a sea of bullshit, of infinite bullshit, with the heat of that shit, the smell of shit goes high to high heaven. I'm just trying to be like a little bit of truth. And it's to call out bullshit from both sides. Because if if I may quote uh, a wrestling promo. Yeah, we have to go wrestling every once in a while. I'm sorry. Uh, if we have to go a wrestling promo, I would quote uh, one of the best promos. Not the not the promo, but one of the best promos CM Punk uh, did. If you don't know who CM Punk is, I don't, I don't have the time to lecture you. <laughs> you can Google that shit. But one of the best promos was CM Punk cutting on, on John Cena. No, not the pipe bomb promo. Not that one. A little later is when he called CM Punk. You have become that which what you hate. You are a Boston Cel- uh, Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox have become the New York Yankees because guess what? They become a dynasty. They started winning championships. That's exactly what these woke pieces of shit lefties have become. They become that which they hate. They become religious assholes. Because they're taking their dogma, shoving it down people's throats, and forcing people to live it the way they see it fit. Guess who does that exactly? Religious motherfuckers. So guess what? You have proven 
the most oldest principle of all time. Humans equal shit. People equal shit. As said so by the philosophers in Slipknot. <laughs> People equal shit. People equal shit. So yeah. We're full of shit, people. And you want to be self-righteous. Go ahead. Keep lying to yourself. Go look at that fucking mirror and look at yourself with. And by the way, lefties, uh, if you are so convinced that you're in the truth and we live in, in a postmodern world where truth doesn't exist. So I don't know why the fuck you get so high and dry or high and mighty when you're talking about, well, there is no such thing as truth. then what you just said is not true. Also, then there is no such thing as transgenderism because that's there's no such thing as truth because you're trying to when you make a statement, generally speaking, when you make a statement, you make you're trying to imply that there is truth in that statement. So if you're, everything that you say is bullshit. So why the fuck should I believe you? Why the fuck should I take your words as as gospel? Because the Bible, you can say whatever the fuck you want, but at least it says it's truth and believes in truth. And postmodern people don't believe in fucking truth because they say it's all of truth is relative because it's whatever you believe it. So how fucking osmosis and fucking convenient that bullshit is. But that's too fucking deep at this hour. And uh, honestly, I've been very sleep depraved and couldn't give a rat's ass more talk about that shit. The thing is, we're all full of shit. All humans doesn't matter the side doesn't matter the belief system. The belief system is the excuse. I've already said that a bunch of times in this podcast. The belief system is the excuse. The real shit is the feelings behind the fucking guy behind that fucking ideology. The ideology don't mean dick. Look at Ravi Zacharias. He talked a good game about Christianity. He talked a good game about apologetics and his private life. He was slinging dick. Like he was Donald Trump with a bunch of fucking Viagra pills. I'm sorry. And it fucking pisses me off because he fooled a bunch of people, including those women who he took advantage of. Does it mean that his philosophy is wrong? Well, what what he preached was wrong. Well, you can take it to the test uh, and to see, determine what he said was true, but his life was definitely bullshit. So he was lying to himself because that the, the biggest crime that he, he committed was that he was living a fucking lie. And that's what I don't want to do. I want to be like showing and and that's a double edged sword by the way. I and I'm and I'm fully aware of it. And hence why I'm doing these fucking podcasts so that way I, I'm not trying to hide what I am, I am a flawed human being, and I don't pretend to be a, a, a very a complete one. I'm fucking confused. I'm fucking. I'm fucking angry. I'm. Fucking, <laughs> there are a bunch of fucking things in me that are not okay. They are not okay, and you know what? That's a good thing. Why? Because it's better to admit that you have a problem. I have a problem with authority. I have a problem with leaders. I have a problem with people pretending they're bullshit, when, uh, 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 pretending to be something that they're not. I have a problem with religious uh, motherfuckers that think that they know everything when in reality they're dumb as fucking dog shit and they don't know dick about dick and they just hide behind for a dogma that they were uh, that was shoved down their fucking throat and, and live that to what they, the degree that they believe that is true, but it's actually fucking bullshit. And the Bible doesn't teach half of the shit that they believe, but they, they, since that shit was shoved down their fucking throats, they believed it as truth and they want to impose that shit on others. Guess what? That happens exactly the same on the other side as well. So that type of bullshit, I'm fucking done with it on both sides. So both right and left, go fuck your mother. There, go fuck your mother. Uh, let's go to the WandaVision review. <laughs> Last week I didn't do episode seven because you know I was talking to Alfred. Alfred didn't has not seen Wandavision, so I'm not that type of dick that just spoils a fuck the living fuck out of a, a series uh, to uh, entertain him. So uh, I'll give a brief review on episode seven. Basically, it was uh, Agatha or uh, 
Agnes, yeah, it was Agnes all along. Uh, she was manipulating uh, the whole thing. Uh, but the hex was created by Wanda. That's the truth. And uh, Monica got powers because she re-entered the hex. And on this episode, on episode 8 now, which I just saw a few minutes ago, uh, we get finally get the answers of what actually really happened. And once again, spoilers the fuck galore. If you haven't seen episode 8, don't stop right now. Go watch the episode and then come back and listen to what I have to say. Okay, so 3, 2, 1. Uh, we get a full explanation of the uh, psychotic episode that Wanda's going through. So... Basically, to the short end, the uh, explanation of the whole fucking thing that's been going on, it has been Wanda that has created the hex, the whole thing that is going on in Westview. It was Wanda, but she didn't do it willingly, maliciously, out of spite and evil. It's just that she's been carrying a fucking baggage since he was a, she was a child, and apparently she's had her powers way before she was in contact with the Mind Stone. Uh, we showed her they shown when she was a child, how her parent, her father was a video, uh, DVD, uh, salesman, apparently selling DVDs in the street. City. So you see that he had my, I, I love Lucy DVDs, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show, uh, basically every sitcom that WandaVision has been ripping off is because it's been based on her childhood and adolescence watching all these fucking TV shows. So, uh, and, uh, then a bomb went off and killed their parents, but Pietro and her survived and they hide under the table. The bomb was about to go off, but Wanda, uh, unexpectedly, uh, was able to neutralize the bomb. And apparently that was the first time she used her powers. Flash forward. We go to, uh, because all of this is, by the way, uh, all the past is being manipulated by, uh, at Agatha or Agnes, uh, and she's trying to in using her magic to force Wanda into looking at her past, all the the pain in her past, in order to see where is the origin of her power. Because Agatha wants Wanda's power, and she wants to know how Wanda is performing all of this. So she's been incognito in the whole hex, just because she sees that Wanda has all this power, but and she is noticing that Wanda is doing this not knowing her full potential, not knowing her full power. She, Wanda still doesn't understand what's going on, but she is doing this, but like in almost in a subconscious level. So, uh, they go forward to, you know, with the hydro experiments and, uh, there's, uh, the, and you see Loki scepter and the, the scepter just floats into her. The gem comes to her and it expands and, it explodes and then goes back to where it was. And when you see the the security footage from the Hydra agents, they couldn't catch nothing of what actually went on. But Wanda, you know, was in contact with the gem and it kind of exploded in her face. And she got a glimpse of the future of herself, but like her silhouette. And then they do another time jump and it's now near before... Like right after Age of Ultron, Pietro just had died. Wanda is mopey, watching TV in her room. Vision comes in and like tries to uh, cheer her up. And you see like their first interactions with each other when they, uh, you know, start talking to each other. And Wanda sees this. And then we get to the revelation of what happened just before the Hex thing. And spoilers, spoiler alert. Wanda did not steal Vision's body. She went to see him, and because when she came back from the snap, she wanted to bury uh, Vision because it was against Vision's re uh, wishes to be resurrected in any sort of way. And in fact, the Dick, uh, the director of Sword, had one, uh, Vision's body, and they were trying to replicate Vision, but they didn't have any Mind Stone, so they couldn't replicate nothing so they couldn't do anything with it and you can see that the dude was trying to peg Wanda for a reaction and Wanda did get pissed and she broke the glass as you saw the security uh, uh, vid a video 
But she didn't steal the body. She just left enough energy, like touched him, and they noticed that Vision's body reacted kind of because Wanda's powers are kind of based on the mind uh, mind gems or the mind stone and whatnot. So uh, the plan was so to whatever it was to have Wanda use her powers. I guess that was the the plan of uh, the guy from Sword, the Dick, director of Sword. To get some way to harness Wanda's powers to resurrect Vision. So it is revealed that then uh, she has uh, she had a letter. And then she drives into Westview, New Jersey. This is happening right after she said goodbye to Vision's body and whatnot that she left in sword. She saw the note and uh, the letter and the letter. It was a letter from Vision. And apparently Vision had purchased a property, a piece of land in Westview, New Jersey to set it up so they can build a house there. And that was like the 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 the, the straw that broke the camel's back and Wanda let out a scream. And that's when she started recreating everything. She created the first thing she created was the house. And then out of her power, she created a version of Vision. So the vision we've been seeing all along spoilers galore is the fabrication of Wanda's magic. So this is not even the real vision. This is not the real vision. This is a creation of Wanda's powers. So uh, like the twins and like the whole entire town. So uh, uh, Agatha has been wondering, wants to know how she controls it. And now she understands that uh, Wanda's magic or chaotic magic and anything that expands outside of the bubble or the hex, as it's called, is not going to survive because it's only under her control. But and that's when Agatha pulls out the twins and brings a fight outside of the house and Wanda's about to throw down with them. And that's when Agatha ends the episode by calling uh, Wanda for the first time ever Scarlet Witch. So we finally in canon have Wanda Maximoff being called by her comic book name, the Scarlet Witch. And then we have a after credit scene where we see that, remember the drone that they shot at Wanda and a few episodes back that the director did? Apparently that was all part of a plan. It was all part of the plan. Uh, he shot uh, th- th- that uh, uh, drone to Wanda, not to harm her because he knew he couldn't, but it was just so that she can get enough of her juice, of her powers in there. And guess what? The real body of Vision was resurrected. So now we have the real Vision being resurrected, however, with some sort of powers. And it's not Vision as we knew him. It's a Vision in a pale version of Vision. So uh, there's only one episode left, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Also, uh, we got the news as a recording date right now that they're going to reboot Superman. And they're going to go with the black Superman. And J.J. Abrams is somehow uh, attached to this project. Um, I got nothing against telling because it is canon part of uh, DC multiverse lore that there is a black Superman who happens to be the president of the United States of that said world. There, there are actually two black Supermans. If I'm, if I recall correctly and uh, am I, so I, I ain't got nothing against uh, the black Superman. It's just that what the fuck happened to Henry Cavill? Like what? Because he got too expensive for you now. Uh, DC, you don't want to use him no more. Keep Henry Cavill. Keep him and keep using him. And there's nothing fucking wrong. I hate all the fucking hate on Man of Steel because Man of Steel got all the hate in the world because it wasn't fun. It's not a fucking Marvel movie. Not everything has to be a fucking Marvel movie. It Not everything has to be funny. Ho, ho, ha, he. Fuck you. You fucking blowhards. God damn it. Yes, Batman v Superman. A lot of flaws. But then I saw the extended cut and made a little bit more sense. Still got my shit against uh, the whole fucking Martha thing. Then Justice League. Holy fucking shit. What a piece of shit. Uh, but hopefully we'll get to see a better version now with the Snyder cut. 
by the way, in a couple of weeks. So, and get ready fucking four hours of that shit. Holy motherfucking God. So, <laughs> uh, so the thing is, like, I feel that we haven't had closure with Henry Cavill. There's still a lot of untapped potential there. And Henry Cavill is a good Superman. It's just that, you know, he worked with the material that was given to him. And, you know, it was more misses than hits. So, I don't know. It seems to me, it, again, nothing against there being a black Superman. I got nothing against there being a black Superman. As I said before, it is canon. As long as it's canon, as long as there is president for that, I'm game. I'm okay. I'm even okay that they introduced him in the Flash movie. That's okay. And you can then, you know, expand the character from there because, you know, the Flash movie is about to open the. The multiverse of the DC universe is, and you're going to show you the different versions of uh, of Superman, and of every DC character. Fine, you can flesh out the character in one of those movies, but don't have him be the main Superman. I think we already have a main Superman. His name is Henry Cavill. The problem with DC is they don't have a North. They don't have a guideline. Not like Marvel. And that I do give Marvel the credit because Marvel, say what you will, has a north, has a path, has a way of their of them doing things. Now, they might change that path here and there in certain aspects, but mostly it sticks to the script. It sticks to what the main purpose of the entire universe is. Uh, with DC, it's choppy as motherfucking hell. And you don't see no coherence whatsoever. Like, for example, I'll just throw fucking Wonder Woman 1984 under the bus for the trillionth time and the billionth person on on the planet to do so. But it just like one in a billion plot holes in 19 and Wonder Woman 1984 uh, wasn't in the first movie. Weren't we told that Diana was forbidden to practice? Or take participate in anything uh, Amazonian training uh, thingy done until she was of age, and then in all of a sudden we start Wonder Woman 1984 with uh, uh, Diana participating in what I I assume are the Amazonian Olympics. So, uh, so who the fuck was lying? And apparently somebody forgot that they said something that they the character shouldn't have been done doing. Sorry. And that's just fucking pointing out a little aspect of how fucked up things are in DC. There is no North. There is no cohesive way. And you can, well, you can explain it away, but oh, it's a multiverse. But uh, these characters are supposed to be living in the same shared universe. I want the characters, I mean, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, rest in peace. <laughs> In Flash. So I don't know what to tell you. Anyway. Uh, I had to land it there with some geeky shit. Uh, uh, if you want to help me out. And continue this thing. Keep buying the t-shirts at T Public Store. You know. It's working. They took some of the designs down. Warner Brothers did this time, which amazes me. And these designs were up for a while. I mean, you can say what you will, but at least uh, WWE were more on top of their shit, removing my designs before everyone. Then came Disney, and then... I mean, no, Disney hasn't even made a, a dent in the whole thing. But anyway, I digress. Uh, buy my t-shirts, so whatever designs are left, if DC hasn't you know, closed all of that. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully I'll be in a better mood next week. Hopefully it'll be more bearable. So again, this has been the Husky by Boo. This has been Ariel. Take care. Bye.